So the third part of the strategy is around uh, installation specific. So in other words, uh, what things can be done uh, out there uh, offshore uh, that uh, protects the, the health of the, uh, the workforce in terms of COVID-19 uh, infection. Um, and we've spoken about a number of things uh, here, and I want to pick on a couple of the, the topics. So one of them was around uh, essential work only. Uh, and we've encouraged uh, members, duty holders, uh, to review their plans, to eliminate what they would describe as non-essential, to focus on uh, safety, uh, safety critical work. Um, and that's something that uh, the health and safety executive, if you talk to Chris Flint, what he's always mindful of is that at the end of the day, you're working on a major accident hazard installation. Uh, and that should be at the very foremost of, of thought. Um, and Whilst COVID-19 protection is important, do not forget that uh, you're working on a major hazard uh, installation. So we're talking about just focusing on the safety critical work, but we haven't defined what essential work uh, is. And I think it's quite right that we didn't do that because we're not in a position to uh, say what an operator's key program uh, is. So uh, we've been challenged in terms of, well, so why is drilling still uh, going on? Well, in some cases, drilling is very, uh, important to the ongoing viability of our uh, business, our industry. Um, so that's why you're seeing uh, some drilling operations still going on. And it's also those operators have decided that in terms of security supply, it is essential to do those drilling operations. So you may well see drilling ongoing. The same with decommissioning. There may be reasons that the operator has that they need to get this decommissioning work done sooner rather than, uh, than later. Uh, what we do know is that when we do go back and talk to the uh, the operators, because we do listen to what the workforce say, uh, and when they do raise a challenge and say, well, why is this happening on our installation? We do go back. Uh, we go back and Deirdre Mickey, who's uh, the chief executive OG UK, will also go to the uh, CEOs of these companies and ask them why this work is ongoing. And we do know that uh, it's usually underpinned, not usually, uh, it is underpinned uh, by a, uh, a, a uh, a robust risk assessment that's assessed all the risks, you know, both the health risks and the uh, the safety risks. So, as I said, essential working is, is not, so we haven't tried to define it, and it's very much left to the operators to talk about. But through looking at the plan, through a, a, the ability to reduce the amount of, of work that's out there, uh, we've been able to shrink the, uh, the workforce in terms of minimum manning numbers so that less people are uh, exposed. Uh, and so that's one of the key things, because through a minimum workforce, we can start to look at things like, so what can we do? Well, for starters, we could try to get uh, single cabin uh, occupancy. Now, I'm not going to say that single cabin occupancy is guaranteed for everyone on every installation, and there's always going to be cases that crop up. But there are other things that uh, we can do as well, and installations can do, such as having uh, a day and a night shift in the same cabin. Uh, and that way you're not not together uh, to ensure that uh, good cleaning uh, is carried out in those cabins as well. So they're the sort of things that can be done in terms of cabin occupancy. Cleaning, very important. And we were very quick to tell operators when we were talking about minimum manning to do not minimum man uh, the, uh, the hotel services crew. So in terms of the stewards and stewardesses and cleaning, that that was really uh, important. And if anything, you should see those numbers uh, uh, go up. So. We're being hard pushing and making sure that, right, get the cleaning right, because that's pretty uh, essential. But then there's mm -hmm. an onus on, on you as individuals as well. You know, we're all being told about you know, hygiene, personal hygiene, making sure that we do wash our hands. It sounds so simple, uh, and yet that's a, still, uh, that's a fundamental part of the uh, defense against uh, COVID-19. Other things though, gym use, uh, staggered meal breaks to try and keep people uh, apart. The way that we operate on the, the platform in terms of permit meetings and try to keep those uh, to a minimum in terms of uh, work permits and how you go and get your work permits and trying to stagger those so you're not all queuing around trying to pick up your, uh, your work permits. So all these things are good, uh, uh, good for uh, keeping uh, people apart and for ensuring that we don't transmit COVID-19. But I do know that one of the good things uh, you know, in terms of step change in safety, have worked hard to pull together a sort of a memoir, a question set of all the things that their members and the installations could be doing uh, in terms of ensuring uh, that we've got good practices that are occurring uh, offshore. 
Uh, and I think when you read through those and when the uh, offshore installation managers can read through those, it will be a great sort of test so that people can tick through it and say, yes, we're doing that. Yep, we're doing that. We're doing that. And if they're not, what could they do? Could they do that? Was there reasons why? And if not, well, that's risk assess that, uh, that process.